So we've been talking about the idea that our minds lie to us when it comes to happiness. And we've been talking about the kinds of spots where our minds seem to lie to us. And one of the big ones that comes up when we ask this question, if only I had blank, I would be so happy, is the topic that you all yelled out really quickly, which is money. We all believe that if we had a lot of this, maybe we wouldn't be perfectly happy, but we'd be a lot happier, right? That's why there are songs like, uh, you know, I want to be a billionaire, Bruno Mars. I want to be a billionaire, so f***ing bad, by all of the things I never had. So we all think if I was a billionaire, I would be a lot happier. But is that really true? Well, it's definitely something a lot of students think. If you survey college students when they're first entering college about the things that they find most important in life, as these researchers have done, you find a really interesting pattern. Because these researchers didn't just survey co college students for one year coming in. They've actually been looking at college students since the 1960s and asking them different questions, like, what do you think is important for life? And so the graph I'm showing you here is the graph of how many college students say being very well off financially is important in life. And what you can see is it's pretty high, and it's been going up since the 1960s. And this is interesting because if you look at other questions, you see just the opposite pattern. So this is the answer to the question, how important is it to develop a meaningful philosophy of life? That's tanked. Like nobody cares about having a meaningful philosophy of life anymore. They just want to be a billionaire, right? This is what people think. But is that the case? Does more money really make us happy? Um, this is one of the biggest questions in the field of happiness research right now. But we have some important answers. And one of my favorite answers um, to this question of whether or not money really makes us happier comes from a very famous study by Danny Kahneman and Angus Deaton. These two, folk, these two guys are famous because they've both separately won the Nobel Prize in economics. So it's two Nobel Prize winners who came together to do this study. And they really wanted to look at this question. As your salary goes up, does your happiness level go up? And so they didn't do this in a small way. They worked with the Gallup polling agency to study over 400,000 Americans. This was back in 2008, 2009. They got their salary information, and they asked them three different questions about their happiness levels. They asked about these folks' positive emotion. Do you experience smiling, happiness, daily enjoyment? Like, how is your positive emotion doing? They asked about the opposite of negative emotion. So do you not feel sad? Do you not worry? This is kind of the opposite of feeling blue all the time. And they also asked about people's stress levels. Are you stress-free? Did you not report stress on the previous day is basically the question, right? And they're going to plot each of these three measures of happiness across people's salaries. And so I'm going to show you the graph that they uh, came up with. This is a pretty famous graph in the field, and it's a little complicated, so I'm going to walk you through it. What you're seeing across the bottom is people's annual income, but it's scored what we might call logarithmically. So the numbers jump up. It starts at 10,000, and it doubles to 20,000, then it doubles again to 40,000. So this is going up pretty steeply because it's on a logarithmic scale. And then each of those graphed lines is actually pointing a, to a different measure of people's happiness level. So that top one is people's positive affect, whether they're like experiencing lots of joy and things. That middle one is whether people report being not blue. So it's the opposite of sadness. So going up is kind of less negative emotion. And the bottom one is when you report being stress-free. You're going to notice two things about this graph. When we look at people's low level of income, those lines are going up. So if you jump from a $10,000 salary to a $20,000 salary, both of those are below the poverty line in the US right now, your happiness is definitely going to go up, right? So one takeaway is like, yeah, if you're not earning very much money, getting more money will actually make you happier. But the other important takeaway is every single one of those lines levels off. It just kind of flatlines. And it seems to flatline at the same level. It's around $75,000 at the 2009 level. What does that mean? That means if you, in 2009, were earning $75,000, even if I double or quadruple your salary, it's not going to improve your happiness on any of these three measures. Now, that is not what we think, but it's what the data really show. Money is not buying us as much happiness as we think, unless you really don't have any money, in which case, you really will get more. If you don't have enough money to put food on the table, to put a roof over your head, yeah, getting those resources is definitely going to affect your well-being. But once you get the basics, getting more doesn't really seem to help. We assume lots of money will make us happy, but not so much. 
there's a related goal too that we think will make us happy, and it's all the stuff that money can buy. You know, if I put that, if I had blank, I would be happier. You know, PlayStation 5, new car, all this stuff, we think that would make us happy. Um, when I think of my own personal awesome stuff goals, I often go uh, to a particular specific reference point. I often think if I had the awesome stuff that Beyonce had, I would be very happy. And just like full disclosure, Beyonce has a lot of awesome, very expensive stuff. She has a very nice apartment uh, in California that she bought for $88 million. She's got a fantastic, uh, very nice convertible car, another $28 million that she dropped on that. She's got a private plane, only you know, $40 million for that. She has diamond-encrusted shoes that cost her $300,000, right? The upshot is it's very good to be Beyonce. She's got some really nice stuff. But the question is, does that really nice stuff make Beyonce happier? Would I be happier if I had awesome stuff like that? Again, this is something researchers really look at. In fact, Richens and Dawson looked at this in particular. They actually looked in the context of what they referred to as a materialism scale. How materialistic are you? Here's some of the items on that scale. I like to own things that impress people. I like a lot of luxury in my life. My life would be better if I owned certain things that I don't have. I'd be happier if I could buy more stuff. The more you answer yes to those questions, the kind of more materialistic you are. But does that predict your happiness? Well, they looked at a correlation between these two things. In other words, as your materialism goes up, does your life satisfaction go up? And what they find is that there is a very significant correlation, but it's a negative correlation. What does that mean? As you get more materialistic, on average, your life satisfaction goes down, not up. So the question is, does money and awesome stuff really make us happier? The answer seems to be no. In fact, it doesn't make, my money won't make you happier unless you're really living in poverty, unless you really desperately need money. Um, getting more when you're at a reasonable middle class income is probably not going to make you happier. And seeking out money, seeking out material goods and the stuff that money can buy seems to make us less happy, not more. So one of the big things we think will make us happy, lots of money and good stuff, doesn't make us as happy as we